Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my channel and today in this video, we are going to look at navigations with Livewire. Now, obviously we have done a few things already in our application if you have followed so far, but there are quite a few things that we should be aware of in our Livewire application to get the most out of it. Now, before I dive into the details of navigation with Livewire, I have a small request. Recently, I have seen that about 80% of my traffic or 80% of my viewers are not subscribed and hence I would request that if you like this video and you feel that the content is useful to you please subscribe so that this count reduces and I have more subscribers watching these videos and also it will help me reach to a wider audience so with that in place let's understand navigations in Livewire to demonstrate the navigation aspect, let me create a few pages first. I'll create three pages. One is the home page, an about us and a contact us. All these pages will have their own blade file as well. So let's go to a code base, close everything else and so I first open the home page about us. contact us. Let me open up the individual blade files as well. Now the first thing that we will need to do is in some way try to navigate between these three pages. So let me create a small component called navblade.php and we have three of these elements. Now I'll create the routes as well. So we'll go over here. All right. So I have defined all those three routes over here. And because routes can also take a live component, I'm saying that when the user goes to this particular route, this is the component that needs to render itself. Okay. So the routes are defined, the components are created. And now, this is what I have added and then add the extra component as well. And let's see. So I get this along with the navigation. Copy, paste. And we are done. So now if I go to about or contact, it does show stuff. Now let me open up my network tab. Okay, the developer console and now keep an eye when I refresh. So I'm on the contact us page. Okay, and I'm loading contact this document, then a CSS file, a JavaScript file, bootstrap and livewire.js. Now, although some of them will be loaded from memory, but still these are requests and what happens is this basically means that these are not working as SPA. They are actual page reloads and I will be loading those assets again and again. How can we make a live application, a single page application? Well, if we have links, then it is very easy for us to tell Livewire that you know this is an SPA and hence Livewire needs to treat those page navigations accordingly. And for that, the only change which I'll have to do is go into the menu, add this directive. And now if I refresh, I'm on the home page. Now keep an eye. When I click over here, can you see only a call was made to the about page? Okay, it's a fetch. And I'm seeing the about us page. When I click on contact, the content changes and only a request to the contact URL was made. If I refresh the contact us page, it obviously loads the bootstrap min, the bundle min and the live wire JS because it needs those assets to render itself. But if there are other pages, depending on the same asset, as you can see, it doesn't load it. And that is the reason it gives you that SPA kind of a feeling. Just a quick one. As you can see, we have already created an SPA. If you 
do a kind of a throttling over here, right? And if I now go to about, can you see there is a loading indicator added as well. I'll show you on a slower bandwidth throttling. See, there is a loading bar and there's that animation that comes from the left to right and it changes the stuff when the page is loaded. So you also get these kind of niceties with this package, right? Now there is one more thing which the creator of this package has described in his talk in Laracon, which is a lot of users do take a lot of time to click and hence if you feel that you want to load certain pages a little quicker by anticipating it that is possible so i'll tell you what i basically mean so right now when i click on home and or rather when i click on about it makes the network request if i hover over contact nothing happens you know it just shows the status bar and stuff like that but yeah obviously nothing is happening and it will wait now i have tapped the button when i tap it the request is made but i haven't released my click and hence although the contact api was called it got the data but my page content has not changed once i release it can you see the thing changed and the url changed as well now if you want to anticipate it and load it preemptively you can do that so i'll go to my navigation and over here i'll do hover with this let's refresh the page and i'm right now on the home page if i hover over contact can you see the data was already requested i haven't clicked it believe me so if i now go to about the about is already called and basically that means when i click the page is already available for me to see if I throttle, maybe we will be able to see that in a better way. Now, if I click on contact, it waits for a while and then loads the page, right? But if I make this hover and the API call is made, right? Now, if I click, see, it came up immediately. So that means if you have some page which is a bit heavy to load, but you can predict that you know once the user comes over here he will definitely go to that particular page you know, stuff like that right you can preemptively load that but again you need to be aware that you know you are loading it with the assumption that the user is going to go there which basically means if the users are not going to that page even though you have preemptively loaded it you will face some performance issues because you are loading stuff which was never got consumed so it's a trade-off you can decide but obviously the package allows you to do so okay um, let me stop the throttling all right so we saw how we can preemptively load stuff right i'll just get rid of that i don't want that to happen on my pages now the important part is persisting some data or some part of a page between the navigation <clears throat> so let me download a sample mp3 first so i have placed an mp3 file inside my public folder called something which will be music okay now i want this to be accessed from the front end so let me do php artisan storage link okay what will happen then is it will create a sim link over here and i will put this mp3 in that folder now if i can go to the home page and add an audio tag yes it's music.mp3 and i'll have the con controls visible let me refresh yes on the home page it is visible let me copy that onto the about us and contact us. Now, if I start playing, you see, we are now on the fifth second. If I now click on about, the page refreshes. So my player has 
done a reset. And this is ideally not the way you would want the behavior for the end user, right? It's, I mean, uh, it's not going to work. So how do we do that? That's where you know, Livewire gives you something called persist. Thing which you need to do is whatever section you want to persist, right? You put it in this blade directive. Now, if I go to home page first, I'll refresh, start the audio. We are on the third, fourth, fifth second, right? Now, if I click on contact, can you see? I am on the contact test page, but still it is running on the 15th second. I go to home. I change my content, but it is still running. And this is working perfectly. I don't know whether you will see the hear the music or not. You can't see, obviously. But yes, the sample audio continues to play even though we are navigating between the pages. So this is helpful if you have some kind of even chat widget which is working or something like that so that another you know, communication continues to be there but you are allowing your users to navigate to other sections of the page as well. So yeah, that's about it guys. That's what I wanted to cover in this video of navigations with Livewire. These are quite interesting ways for you to build your you know, single page applications and also persist data. If you like this video, then do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.